Welcome back to the channel. My name is Ryan, and today we'll be discussing the top 25 for the coaches poll, which came out today. And I might be posting this tomorrow, but I'm covering it today. The reason I didn't do this earlier is because I was doing some of my family. So I was just doing that and also I was getting ready for school starting up, which is going to happen on Wednesday. So I didn't have time to be able to edit everything today. So hopefully I might be able to get out today, but I doubt it. So that is why. Let's talk about this top 25. I'm going to I'm going to read off everything, but I'm going to stop at certain points to get my own opinions about certain teams and what I disagree with, what I not, what I disagree with, what I agree with, all that other stuff. So yeah. At number 25, you have Texas A&M. I agree with that ranking. I made my own top 25 about a month ago around that. And I am pretty sure I had Texas A&M number 25. So they need to prove themselves, but they have the talent that it can rise, but they can definitely fall really soon. So yeah, number 24, Texas Tech. Fair ranking. Number 23, Tulane. I mean, they won the AAC last year. They're a very good record. And they beat USC. So they deserve a top 25 spot. Number 22, you have Ole Miss. I get that. I mean, you got a very, they got a very good offense, a pretty good, a solid defense, nothing special, not bad, but they just got to get a little bit better in certain areas, and they can definitely exceed. But right now, you're ranked number 22, but the coaches, this is not the, I don't think this is the official, like, AP poll, but it's a coaches poll, which is quite interesting to see what the coaches do about this stuff. So, yeah, they got to Ole Miss number 22, and I'm fine with that. Number 21, my first big, like, problem with this list. There's not many problems with this list, in my opinion. Uh, Wisconsin, number 21, makes no sense. You got Luke Fickle as head coach now from Cincinnati, but this team just doesn't. This team doesn't like pop off, and it's like Wisconsin or Arkansas, Wisconsin or South Carolina, and it's like when you look at it that way, you might be thinking, well, top 25 isn't that bad, Wisconsin. When you compare it to like, would you rather have them? Or why not put like Illinois, who proved themselves to be good last year? Why not put them in there or in that spot? So yeah, Wisconsin's there. I'd rather put South Carolina in this spot. Maybe Mississippi State even. And Mississippi State's defense isn't terrible. It's not like a great, but it's kind of in between. It's not great. It's not bad. It's kind of in between. And their offense is pretty good. Why not put them up there? They were like a 10-win team last year. I don't understand. They're always high Wisconsin. Uh, North Carolina, number 20. That's fair. I think you've heard my opinions about Drake May. He's one of the best quarterbacks in the country. You have Oklahoma at 19. That's fair, in my opinion. You got Oregon State at 18. A little bit high for Oregon State. But they, did, they did lose some production from last year, especially defensively. So I expect them to be a little bit lower. But 18 isn't half bad. It's not a bad ranking. Number 17, you have Kansas State. They, have, like, they lost Deuce Vaughn. who's probably the main guy that they lost. So, yeah. And then they won the Big 12 last year. Got stomped by Alabama. And, yeah, I'm fine with them at number 17. TCU at 16, that is kind of low from a team that just made a national title game. No respect given to TCU at all, which, I mean, they made the national title game, but if they wanted to represent themselves in a positive way, losing by 58 is not a good way to do that. But they had a great year last year. The two main guys of Max Duggan and then Quentin Johnson left. That's going to be a problem with them. But you still have Sonny Dykes, who was the head coach. So I think this team should be probably in at least the top 15. I mean, that's like the bare minimum for an NCAA champion. Like, contending. At least somebody made the national championship. But at number 15, you have Oregon. Oregon's not a bad spot here. Bo Nix is pretty good. I like Bo Nix. He's in my Heisman potential. So I like Bo Nix. I like this ranking for Oregon. Um, number 14, Utah. I like this ranking for Utah. Overall, I think they prove themselves to be a very good team consistently. They won the Pac-12 tie title back-to-back -back years so yeah number 13 Notre Dame Notre Dame I love Sam Hartman I'm not talking about Notre Dame in a while so I've not been able to talk about him Sam Hartman is phenomenal he has a great arm very good accuracy he can make all the throws he can't run but at this team I don't think he'd have to run a lot I think they have a good old line I think this team is gonna be very good overall with Marcus Freeman as a head coach I'm ex I'm not a Notre Dame fan of course I'm in the south I'm not a Notre Dame fan but if you come from an ACC school that's close I had fun watching you go up to a different school, I can root for you. Like Sam Hartman was a Wake Forest. I love that Wake Forest team that just couldn't play defense but scored a lot. I love that type of off, that team. It's not my favorite team, but I loved it. 
He's up at Notre Dame. I think he'll like, have a good time at Notre Dame at a quarterback. You have Texas at 12. That is a great ranking for Texas. I've seen people have Texas in their top five. Like, what are you, why? They've proven nothing. Steve Sarkeesian got to prove that he's a, a coach that can win big games against good teams. There was a difference between a big game and a good team win. Like last year, you beat Oklahoma by a lot. That team was not good. If you beat them the year before, that would have been a very good win. But you got to win big games, big time situations. We'll be able to prove that when they play Alabama. And then... You're at, and then a number 11, you have Washington. Washington is a fair ranking here. I have no problem with Washington being here. I like Michael Penix. I think their offense is very good. I think this is a good spot for them. And then at number 10, we're at the top 10 now. This is when, this is the most confusing part of this whole list. It's about to show up. Even more confusing than Wisconsin being number 21. Um, Tennessee being at number 10, and then Clemson being at number 9. I have no idea how that works. Yeah, they have the same record. At the end of the year, loss to the same team, which is South Carolina. I don't know how they're not in the top 25. And then they played in the Orange Bowl, and Tennessee beat them with almost the exact, with a very similar roster that they have right now by 17. It wasn't like it was close. It was a complete blowout. Tennessee dominated the game. Everyone knew when Tennessee played, Clemson showed from the start that that Tennessee just had control of that game and it showed throughout it. So I don't know why they're number 10 here. And Clemson's number nine. I mean, Clay Cup, Cade Putnick, he looked very good against North Carolina, then sucked against Tennessee. So what does that show? Tennessee's defense is better, is better than Clemson's offense. And Tennessee's offense is better than Clemson's defense, which means they're the better team, which means he should be ahead of Clemson. I don't understand that. I am a Tennessee fan. So not happy about this ranking. But I wanted my team in the top 10 of some poll, so I'll take it here. But Tennessee, they should be higher. They beat them with almost the exact same roster they have right now. Take out Brian Young, it's the exact same roster. And that Brian Young did not have a huge impact on that game. It was not, he was not having a huge impact on that game. I'm pretty sure it was Beasley who had the main impact on the game defensively. So I forgot his first name, but Beasley. I'll put a picture of him. But... He was very good that game. So that was the main guy. And number eight, Florida State. I am high on Florida State this year. I think Jordan Travis is going to be very good. We'll learn a lot about Florida State whenever they play LSU. But I think this team is very good. I love Again, I love Jordan Travis. I love how this offense can play. I think their defense is getting a little bit better. But it's only going to help them out. And I think this team can soar this year. When ACC is going down, Florida State can go up. So i like to see that. And yes, I'm saying ACC is going down. Miami isn't that great. Clemson's going down compared to the former levels that they've had. Again, D.J. Ogongale was terrible on their team, so maybe, maybe not. He went to Oregon State, by the way, if you didn't know. I didn't know that until I checked a couple months, like a couple, about a month or two ago. I don't know. I forgot he went there, to be honest. But D.J. like he played very forgettable, so, yeah. But, I get I don't think many Clemson fans like D.J. Ogongale. As their quarterback, because he never won them a big game. He couldn't win anything that was significant when he played a very good defense or a pretty good defense like Notre Dame's at the, last year. They couldn't do anything. He sucked. So they got replaced by Cade Klupnik. So, yeah, I don't think I have any problem with him leaving. So, yeah. I think Clemson's not great. I don't think North Carolina's great. I don't think Miami's great. Louisville. Florida State could become great. I like their system. I think the team can be very good. Number seven, Penn State, a little bit high in my opinion, I think. I mean, Drowler, Drowler's not bad, but I don't think, this team has stuff to prove. There's a lot of things to prove still, like beat Michigan, beat Ohio State, one of those two, and you can be gladly in the top ten, but you can't. They have a lot of struggles the past couple years beating those teams, and especially against Michigan, because goodness gracious, you cannot stop a run against them last year. That was pathetic. In Ohio State, yeah, was a, that was one of the worst fourth quarter performances I've ever seen from a team. That was terrible from Penn State. So you got to get better in late game situations and stop in the run against Michigan, which is tough to do, but that is possible. How you stop the run against Michigan is get a lead early. Make them throw. You have to win in a shootout. TCU proved that. It is possible. But yeah, 
At number six, they got USC. That is a fair spot for USC. I love their offense, but there's a lot of questions defensively they got to answer this year. I mean, Caleb Williams, we already know how great he is. I love talking about Caleb Williams. So, yeah, I think we already know how good he is, but their defense has a lot of stuff to prove. It show that they're not that physical, and they show that against Utah, they can run the ball over them, and they have tough times to make it open field tackles, which is a big problem, and they got to fix that to be able to beat those type of teams that are in the top five at minimum. And again, I think if USC played Penn State, that'd be a tough game to win. I think if they played Tennessee, they probably would lose. So it's kind of like, they're great, but there are some teams that are right there. And the difference is defense. Tennessee's defense is not great, but offensively, they might even be better than USC. We have to see. Number five, we're in the top five now. We got LSU at number five. I have no problem with that ranking at all. I like LSU. I'm very high on them. I like Jaden Daniels. I like Brian Kelly. I think Harold Perkins is the best defensive player in the country. I've been saying that since I've started my channel. Harold Perkins is the best defensive player in the country before any rankings came out with players in the country. Talking about the defense of players in the country. I had Harold Perkins number one. He looks so dominant against Arkansas. It was just mind-boggling how fast the guy can be as a freshman linebacker. And then they got Mason Smith coming back. So this defense is just going to get better. I'm very excited for this team. And even though I'm a Tennessee fan, I'm happy I don't have to play them this year. And we got to play them last year. And by the way, I'm going to mention this since I'm a Tennessee fan. We absolutely destroyed them last year. So that was very, that was the most fun I've ever, that was, that was a fun game to watch. <laughs> and yeah, um, Ohio State is at number four. Not a big surprise, I think. They got a little quarterback problem. Not problem, but you got to prove yourself. I think Kyle McCord is the quarterback's name. They got He got to prove himself. He really got to prove himself because the guy you were just coming, you're going to fill him for, is C.J. Stroud, the man who almost single-handedly beat Georgia. And you know how tough that is to beat Georgia. I mean, hitting a hooker sucked against them. In general, Will Levis sucked. Will Levis sucked against a lot of teams, but even Bryce Young didn't have a great game in the national title game against Georgia. Granted, he didn't have many weapons, but it's Bama. They're loaded everywhere. So, yeah, I mean Georgia can give you problems defensively, and I've never seen a quarterback dice up Georgia like the way Bryce, the way C.J. Stroud did. Only one that's comparable is Bryce Young, and that's why they were top two picks in the draft. So they got to fill him for. For C.J. Stroud, that's going to be very tough for Common Core to do. But you got Marvin Harrison Jr., and Marvin Harrison Jr. makes almost any school a top 15 team in the country. With the talent Ohio State has, they could be very good this year. And I wouldn't be surprised. Number three, Alabama. That's not a big surprise. And they need to figure out their quarterback, though. They really need to figure that out. And I think they're going to go with Milrow because that just fits their system a lot better. If they're going to a run team, they gotta, gotta, they got to have a great running quarterback. And there's no other better than Jalen Miller, pretty much. At just speed, physicality, I mean, great. I mean, just relentless, emotionless murder ball pretty much out there. And it's going to run through them. And it's going to be interesting to see how everything plays out. And, again, you don't have to pass whenever you can absolutely just, if you can hand the ball 50 times to three elite running backs. So they're going to be fine for a while. And then at number two, Michigan. Not a surprise. I got J.J. McCarthy as a pretty good player. Blake Corbin is very good with Donovan Edwards. This offensive line is very good. This defense is super physical, and I like that, especially in the Big Ten. And a lot of their starters are coming back. And this year is supposed to be known as the, this is the chance Michigan has of winning the national title. This is the best roster Jay, that Jim Harbaugh has ever had. At least make the national title at minimum. You have a great trans, not the toughest schedule in the world, very easy, very easy out of conference. You know what they're going to get each year. I think it'll be very fun to see how they perform. And then I think they're worthy of number two, by the way. They're above Bama, in my opinion. Um, make the playoffs in Bama. You didn't make it last year. You made a couple times before. You made a lot of times before. But it's from last year mainly. And what do you think is going to happen this year? Michigan's looking very good, so I got Michigan. I like Michigan at number two. And then number one, not a surprise to anyone, Georgia. Did you really think anyone else would be number number one? This is their first number one ranking. I'm pretty sure by the coaches poll since 2008, the start off the year. I heard that stat on, on ESPN, so yeah, you can take the probably one. Um, Brock Bowers can single-handedly make a team a top 10 team in the country. 
Then you add everyone on their offensive line, everyone on their defense, these great wide receivers and weapons that they have. And then you have Carson Beck, who looked very good. Only thing I have a question with this team is, we've won two times before. It's dang near impossible to win three. You're bound to fold at one point. And Stetson Bennett isn't your guy. It's Carson Beck. Can you can Carson Beck get comfortable? Probably can. But your first test is against South Carolina. Again, I think they should be on this top 25 list, but that's okay. Because they're not. So yeah. But you gotta be ready. You gotta be ready. Because that, again, Georgia's schedule is super easy, but you still got that tough game at the end of the year against Tennessee. And the year and the game before that, you gotta play against Ole Miss. That ain't no cheap game. That's a very tough game you could possibly have to go in. You're at home, but Ole Miss, you know Lane Kiffin is crazy. Lane Kiffin will go for it on 4th and 17 at his own, at his own 10-yard line, and it somehow will work. It's crazy, but shout out to Lane Kiffin. But yeah, hope you all have a great day. Stay safe, y'all. I know some bad weather came through the South, so is that anything? if anything affected you, we'll be praying for you and anything like that. Because we had some tornado threats go through, so hopefully nothing bad hit anyone. But yeah, hope you all have a great day. Stay safe, y'all. Hit the like button if you like this video. Comment whatever you want because I love hearing y'all opinions about the top 25. I'll put the whole top 25 list in the description. Hope you all have a great day. Stay safe, y'all. Hit the subscribe button if you, like this, if you like this type of content we talk about all day, every day, whenever. Yeah, all week. Yeah, hope you all have a great day. Stay safe, y'all, and God bless y'all.